Happy New Year to all our friends and viewers who are joining us for our last video of 2022. Today, we're bringing you the story of independent manufacturer American Motors entry into the muscle car and pony car wars of the late 1960s and into the early 70s. While AMC may not have been as large as the big three, they were still able to design, engineer, build, and market some now legendary cars that collectors and enthusiasts love and respect all these years later. This 1970 AMX is the epitome of the coolest cars they ever made, and you're sure to enjoy this beautiful pony car we have for you today. So sit back and enjoy it. Now, let's go for a ride. Hey, my name is Jim Felton and I have a 1970 AMC AMX and I've had this particular car since uh, 1996 and I happened to look in the back of Old Cars Weekly and there was a section called Kenny's Clunkers. No car over $600, don't scrap it, save it. And I was looking through Kenny's Clunkers and I happened to see a 1970 AMX for $350 in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And my first car at age 17 was a 69 AMX. My father drove a 69 AMX, and those were daily drivers for years and years. So I was familiar with the AMX, and I had always wanted a 70 because they produced about 4,100 of them total. And the total production run for uh, AMX 68 through 70 was under 20,000. So the 70 was very rare. I saw it for $350. I immediately called this place, which happened to be a junkyard. It was a tow away. And I tried to get more information on the car. They couldn't give me a lot of information. And I said, well, can you at least tell me if it has an engine in it or any is the interior there and they sent somebody out to look at it and then the woman i was talking to said hey look i'm sorry this thing doesn't have back seats at all and i immediately thought they don't know what they have i asked about the title they told me it was a clear title so i bought it for 350. but at 350 dollars, you can imagine what kind of shape it was in which was you know, caused me to sit and stare at that car for about two weeks, drinking beer, wondering if I was going to take on this project. 
But the more I looked at it, I saw that the body was very straight. There was no rust. Engine was shot. Uh, front windshield was broken. Interior was absolutely trashed. Had shag carpeting in it. Uh, I opened up the trunk, and there was personal items, crockpots, evic eviction notices, uh, just like somebody was living in the car, and it got towed off. So I, I knew even at that time what a project this would be, and I knew that I really didn't have the skill to do it by myself, but I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And it took me about 15 years with a lot of help from friends and, and people I met along the way. But the entire car, minus the last rebuild of the engine, was done in my garage at my house, including the paint job. Uh, and the reason the AMX was uh, something that I personally wanted is because my father was sales manager at an AMC dealership in Winthrop Harbor, Illinois, which was right on the line with Kenosha, Wisconsin. So it was AMC territory. My family drove, well, Ramblers at the time. But so I, I grew up with AMX. I drove one as a daily driver up until, you know, I was in my 30s. And uh, so I decided to take this on. As I said, it was totally a uh, total rebuild. Uh, so Everything was done. It was done as cheaply as possible. I had four small children at the time. I didn't have money to do this, so it was start and stop for years. Uh, thank goodness there was an internet by then because I was able to find parts. And luckily, there's no numbers matching on uh, American Motors cars. So as long as I had a 1970 390 block, and the car did come with a 390 four-speed uh, and it was originally a shadow mask car. Um, you know, I was I had something good to work with, so the whole thing was restored using AMC parts. The original color was bittersweet orange, which was an AMC color. So it was bittersweet orange with the shadow mask. And at the time, the shadow mask, which just means it was blacked out from the uh, firewall up. Um, the hood and the interior engine compartment were black. That was a $50 option through AMC. And in fact, the uh, 8-track player cost significantly more than the shadow mask at the time. And it wasn't out until, until I arrived in Arizona when it was finally rebuilt to the point that uh, it needed paint and body work. And I found an individual by the name of Pete Tan, and his business which, by the way, is Vintage Mobile Restoration, based here in Arizona. Uh, he just charged a flat rate per hour. So he told me he could do whatever I wanted to the car, and it would be in my garage the whole time. Whatever equipment he needed, he would bring. And so Pete and I struck up quite a friendship, because he was here quite a bit. I stripped the car chemically in the garage myself, uh, because anything that I could do, I wanted to do to cut down on the cost, and, and Pete was good with that. And uh, so the whole car was painted in my garage. It was originally a shadow mask, and at the last moment, uh, I was just going to go big, bad green all the way around, which is a, an original AMC color for that year. And so the whole thing was going to be shot big bad green and at the last possible moment the do or die moment pete said well if you've ever had any thoughts of restoring this to a true shadow mask think about it because now's the time if you don't do it now you're not going to do it and i thought about it for a day and uh we decided to put the shadow mask back on so this car as it sits now with the side pipes and all, that was a, uh, an option that was available at the dealer at the time. So as the car sits and as it appears right now, you could have ordered that car from AMC in 1970 and received that car. Uh, the only difference is the shadow mask, we painted gloss black instead of flat black, and that's because of the uh, upkeep for a flat black paint job. The car was driven for about five years after restoration until my amateurish rebuild 
uh, failed me. And by that time, I had met Dan Curtis with Arizona AMC. And uh, if anybody knew how to restore a, an AMC, it was Dan. And uh, so I took it to Dan, and Dad did a uh, quite a rebuild on it. So originally, with the uh, functional Ram Air, it was if I'm it was 325 horsepower factory with Ram Air. That's with a 390 engine. And I talked with the gentleman who works for Dan at a car show recently, and he told me with the rebuild they did, it's closer to 500 horsepower now. The louvers were something that were aftermarket at the time, produced in the 70s. And uh, I had those louvers in a barn with a lot of other car parts. I didn't even realize I had it. You know, as, as Pete and I were finishing this thing, it was turning out a lot better than I ever dreamed of. And I told Pete that. I said, you know, this is really turning out much better than I thought. I'm going to be afraid to drive it. And Pete said to me, Jim, at least once a month, drive it like you stole it. And so that's what I intend on doing. Now it goes to car shows and, and around the neighborhood. Uh, I think I'm just going to uh, enjoy what I have now. Is this a cool car or what? Let us know in the comments what you think of this extraordinary example of AMC's finest. We appreciate Jim's time in bringing us this AMX today. Next week, will reintroduce you to a man you may remember for a feature we did on his stunning 1958 Corvette. Brad Lana was back with another beautiful car. This time, it's a 64 and a half Mustang convertible that's sure to please all your senses if you have any affinity at all for cars, but especially if you're a fan of Ford's first pony car. Until then, please remember to be careful out there.